how do you feel about minimum wage? And uh, please explain, how do you feel about minimum wage, Mr. Cookman? We had a minimum wage bill before the legislature this year, and I know Mr. Trump and I will disagree on this. Uh, I think the uh, minimum wage is important. I voted in favor of it. Uh, and I would even go further to say that I think that a minimum wage uh, should be a livable wage. Because I don't think that anybody that is out there willing to work a 40 hour a week work week uh, should do so without being able to support themselves. And based upon what our minimum wage was before and even with it today, <coughs> I think that uh, it, it would be very difficult, if not impossible, for a person to, to live on what we call minimum wage. I think we should make it a livable wage. And I think that if we do that, that that is going to basically, uh, as the old saying goes, the high tide floats all boats, that that's going to improve our business climate, uh, there will be more money spent in our economy, uh, and it will make it better for all of us. And so uh, I very much was in favor of the minimum wage bill that was passed. Uh, in fact, I would have taken it a little bit further. Well, I would put this in the category of those that, uh, as Don described, where if you had a magic wand and you can wave it and make something happen. And it just isn't so. You can't wave a magic wand and alter the laws of supply and demand, of price and supply, of price and demand. You can't. It sounds good, it might feel good. Why not make it $25 an hour? Make it $40 an hour. It's just a law, right? Everybody has to abide by it. The truth is this, when government interferes in the market, in the free market in that manner, it eliminates jobs. It just does. And so let's be realistic about the trade-off. If you're gonna say, you can't employ anybody unless you're gonna pay them a minimum of whatever, $12, $15, pick your number, you're putting people out of work. And all you have to do is look at our teenagers in this country. They can't find work. In the minority communities, it's 50%. Part of that, part of that problem is attributable to the minimum wage laws. Now, I'm for high wages. I want to see wages rise. I want to see wages for everybody rise. And the way you do that is with an expanding economy that has a demand and an appetite for labor. So people are competing with each other so that they can't afford, they can't get employees who are qualified and skilled to work for them unless they pay a high wage, a living wage, as Don said. Government regulation, government fiat, government edict doesn't make that happen magically. Uh, the Sudafed is a uh, legal permissible drug in West Virginia and it is still uh, obtainable without a prescription. Uh, it's apparently a very effective drug for some people, and so there has been legislation the last couple of years, and I will speak for Senator Cookman. I, I think he actually voted upon a bill this year or had a chance to express his opinion on it. Um, I am not in favor of legislation that would require anybody to have a prescription from a doctor to be able to get sued for it. I think that's an unreasonable burden on people. Uh, the, uh, they have, the law has been changed so that now people who want it have to get it from behind the counter and the uh, pharmacy is required to record your name and address and uh, when you purchase Sudafed, but you don't have to have a prescription from a doctor. I don't think anybody should have to pay a doctor, have to pay a doctor 50 or 75 or 100 bucks for a visit to get a prescription so he can buy Sudafed. Uh, that's my position on that. There's legislation already on the books that passed in 2012 that limits the right, the amount of Sudafed that a person can get. Uh, and I think it's uh, 3.6 grams a day or 7.2 grams per week. That's been on the books since 2012. Before I was there, when Mr. Trump was not there. 
so neither one of us can be faulted for that. It was a bill before the legislature this year to make Sudafed a prescription drug, and I had a lot of problem with that. Uh, but based upon my years of experience as a judge and seeing, has anybody ever seen meth mouth? Have anybody seen the travesty that, that is caused by methamphetamine made by uh, the ingredient of Sudafed? It has ruined lives. Uh, it, it just, it's a horrible, horrible thing. It can ruin properties, but more importantly, it ruins lives. And so I finally came down on the side of, yes, let's make it prescription. I know that that might make it more difficult for some people, but there was two other things that made me make that decision. And one of them, and those were, there's two substitutes for pseudofedrin uh, in the normal form. One of them is called Nexafed that is more difficult to use uh, to make methamphetamine than regular pseudofedrin uh, was before. So that was one of the reasons I, I thought that as well but it was really for the safety of our, our people. Um, like I said, if you haven't seen the ruination of people's lives that I've seen over 40 years being in the law enforcement business of people that have uh, had meth houses, have used meth, uh, have ruined their lives, ruined their families, uh, and endangered other people as well, uh, I don't think you would fault me for voting in favor of uh, requiring uh, Sudafed to be prescription drug, especially now with the advent that there are other Sudafedrin uh, enclosed uh, medicines that cannot be uh, converted to methamphetamine, so these are Nexafed is one of them. Like I said, this, I never thought I was a politician before, but running for this office, I, I've now seen that I am a full-fledged politician because I've had attacks on my family. I've had uh, flyers come out in the mail saying that I am uh, against guns. I've had little girls come up to me and ask me, are you going to take my guns? I'm endorsed by the NRA, the organization in the United States that has best been known for protecting gun rights. But yet I'm getting these false flyers saying that I'm going to take people's guns. Uh, and it goes on and on. There's push polls, people making calls to people's homes saying that I was against seniors and children. Uh, I've been uh, selected as the uh, champion of children last year in the state. Uh, but yet I have these false statements coming out saying that I am against children or against seniors. And it just goes on and on. Uh, <clears throat> I just, uh, Kayla, that is a citizens, abuse, a citizens against law, lawsuit abuse. That's, they're saying, well, you've collected all this money from trial lawyers, and that is terrible. You shouldn't be doing that. You're obviously bought by trial lawyers. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, let me tell you, being a judge, who else would you look to for support other than the lawyers who have practiced before you over the years? I would also point out, even though that has been a criticism of mine, that I have gotten support from trial lawyers. Mr. Trump is a trial lawyer. He advertises as a trial lawyer. He advertises for personal injury cases. If he wasn't running for office, he would be supporting me. He's already told you that I'm a fine guy. Uh, so he would be supporting me uh, in this election pursuit as well. The case, the case I have to make for myself as a candidate uh, has really nothing to do with Don, uh, certainly not directly. I've said before, I'll say it again, I'll say it here on the record before all of you in Hampshire County. I admire and respect Don, and I have for a long time. I've known him, I guess, about 30 years now. And I know his record of public service, and it's worthy of respect. I also have a record of public service. And so the, the, case, the case I would make to you for consideration of me as a possible senator is based on areas where Don and I view things differently. And there are some areas where we view things differently. Uh, but here in Hampshire County, uh, 
I would, I would say, and Don, I want you to know, I hope you do know, the advertising materials that you've talked about, and I got some of them in the mail, are not anything that I have anything to do with. You know that, right? You know I have nothing to do with those mailings. I haven't sent them, I haven't arranged for them. They're, that is the price we pay, apparently, for living in a free country where other groups can send out whatever they want and express their voices. Some of it is uh, harsh, some of it is offensive, but those do not come from my campaign. And I think highly enough of Don, I, I hope he knows that. And I'm saying that here in front of his, his uh, local folks, uh, that I would not 